Ready? Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mark Traeger. I'm the chair for the Committee on Education. We are convened here this afternoon for a vote on a package of bills and resolutions aimed at the health and wellness of more than 1.1 million students in the New York City education system. Research shows that establishing healthy behaviors in younger people is easier and more effective than efforts to change unhealthy behaviors already established in adults. In recognition of this uh, afternoon hour, I'll be very brief in my opening remarks. Proposed introduction 560A, a bill I am proud to sponsor, would require the DOE to report on its pilot program, which we actually pushed for, to review school start times to reduce adolescent sleep deprivation. The Center for Disease Control's CDC 2015 Youth Risk Behavior Survey found that on average, 72.7% of high school students were getting less than eight hours of sleep on weeknights, even though optimal sleep for adolescents is between eight and a half and nine and a half hours per night. Studies show that lack of sufficient sleep impacts an adolescent's mood, behavior controls, attention, and academic performance. It also leads to a greater risk of mood disorders like depression and anxiety, increased stimulant use, a rise in drowsy driving rated traffic ac uh, crashes, and increased obesity and obesity related diseases such as diabetes. Early school start times may interfere with the natural uh, circadian rhythms of developing adolescents who generally get tired much later in the evening than younger students. Starting middle and high schools later, after 8 a.m., could help bring an adolescent's schedule more in line with his or her body's natural clock. Studies have shown that when school districts start a school leader, which they're doing across the country, students have reduced tardiness and truancy, lower levels of depression, and improved academic outcomes. In addition, excessively early school start times can disturb students' meal schedule. When schools start very early, lunch is sometimes held before 11 a.m. We have schools in our school system that serve lunch at 9 o'clock in the morning. That is not lunch. That is breakfast. And that is not good for our students and for our children. Um, <laughs> that is breakfast to me. We must look at the school day in a holistic manner and make sure our students are comfortable throughout the day. Proposed introduction 560A would require the uh, DOE to submit a report to the mayor and the speaker of the council regarding the key findings and recommendations of, of its school start pilot program on or before September 30th, 2020. The report would include the names of the schools, the start times, the community outreach engagement uh, plan, and key findings uh, regarding attendance and lateness, whether the DOE intends to continue or expand the, the program and recommend changes to start time system-wide. This is going to force the DOE to have a real comprehensive look at programming in the school system, which it really has not done for quite some time. Um, I used to teach a 7.30 in the morning regents class, and I had students from the Bronx, and I taught in Brooklyn. And students would have to travel sometimes using two trains and two buses to get to my school for a 7.30 in the morning class. They would come routinely late, and they would be sleep, sleep deprived. That, that affected their academic performance. We have to build a school system around the needs of our kids and nothing else. Um, I also uh, just want to point out we have other bills and resolutions here today. Uh, I, I think uh, we have Councilmember Cabrera who will uh, briefly speak upon uh, resolution number 238, uh, calling on the department to ban processed meats from being served in New York City's uh, schools. Councilmember Cabrera, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Uh, I literally will take uh, 30 seconds. I just I came to thank you, to thank uh, the committee in support of this resolution when we have uh, the research clearly stating that just eating processed meats twice a, a week uh, increases the chances of death by 50%. I think it's paramount that the New York City Board of Ed uh, will ban processed meats being served in New York City Public School. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Cabrera. And uh, next, uh, we have a bill that I, this, she has been relentless uh, on this issue, and we really appreciate her leadership calling attention to it, to a real uh, public health crisis, in my opinion. Uh, Councilmember Barron, for resolution number 632, calling on the department to create a diabetes and, and pre-diabetes health-based curriculum. Councilmember Barron, you have the floor. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to briefly call my colleagues' attention to this resolution. As has been stated, it calls on the DOE to establish a diabetes and pre-diabetes curriculum. We know that 40% of the children in our school are overweight. And we know that diabetes is a chronic condition that affects a large percentage of our populations. We want to do all that we can, as the uh, chair has said, to establish good habits rather than try to correct situations as uh, these children grow into adulthood. So I ask all of my colleagues to support this resolution. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Council Member, and thank you for your leadership. Um, and we're also voting a resolution sponsored by Council Member 11, Resolution 716A, calling on the Department to adopt all the policy recommendations of the Mayor's Sexual Health Education Task Force and provide comprehensive sexual health education on a regular basis across all grade levels. I'd like to thank uh, my staff and committee staff for getting ready for today's vote. I'd like to thank my colleagues for being here today so this committee can vote on, on the package of bills and resolutions. And I'll, I'll now ask the clerk to please call the vote. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on education. All items are coupled. Chair Traeger. I vote aye. Barron. I vote aye. I vote aye and ask to be added to all those that I'm not already signed on to. Thank you. Cornegie. Aye. Drum. Aye. Lander. I vote aye. Rose. I am please add me to all couple bills and resolutions. Thank you. Gordenchik. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Borelli. I vote aye on all uh, except Reso 238. I simply uh, cannot join this gang of gastronomic Jacobins in this war against chicken cutlets and other delicious lunch meats. You're forgiven. Do, do they use the guillotine to slice the meat? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> the butcher is that all right never mind I vote of 12 in the affirmative zero in the negative no abstentions all items are adopted by the committee with resolution 238 being adopted by the committee 11 in the affirmative one in the negative and no abstentions I do want to note also this was the uh, our first um, uh, committee gathering and vote with our great addition to the education committee council member Farrell Lewis yes she is a dynamo, and uh, we're very, very lucky to have her serve in this committee. We thank her for her great leadership and support of, of public schools. So thank you so much, Councilmember Lewis. And I do think we'll leave the vote open for how? Uh, Councilmember Borelli, what was that? In case his, yeah, I haven't heard the, the Jacobins since the French Revolution lessons, so uh, that's quite quite a stretch, Councilmember Borelli. Thank you. Um, but we have a vote open for, for 10 minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs>